let's talk about breath sounds. Let's simplify it, okay? When you're out there charting, you'll do the hit that drop down. There's like 15 different breath sounds. But let's make it simple. Let's distill it down to these basic breath sounds because these are the ones that we're actually going to do something about, okay? So let's break it down. So our breath sounds, clear. So now what's a clear breath sound? Like me and you, just walking around, you, feel, you hear good aeration in the top and in the bases, and it's okay to put a clear breath sound, okay? If you hear stuff rattling around, or you hear things moving or whistling, then you can look at the other ones, okay? But if, the, if you just hear air moving in, air moving out, go ahead and put clear, okay? Nothing wrong with putting clear. Wheezes, what are wheezes? Usually a wheeze is an expiratory wheeze, okay? So air is coming in, and on the way out, the airways are tightening up, okay? So it makes this whistling sound, this wheezing, okay? Um, and you'll hear it throughout the lungs, okay? You won't hear it upper airway, that's a different thing. There are people who could actually fake wheezes, okay? Sometimes some, you'll listen to those people, and they'll go, mm -hmm, and we'll mistakenly call that a wheeze, but that's not a wheeze, that's an audible wheeze, which is actually done by their vocal cords. And sometimes the patient will do that, you know, because they think, I don't know, they think they're gonna get the, the better meds or whatever, uh, or more attention, but just tell them to be quiet, okay, when they do that and then listen, because you can't really fake real wheezes, okay? Now if you feel, if you hear wheezes, it's usually gonna be expiratory wheezes, and we treat those with bronchodilators. Sometimes you'll hear inspiratory and expiratory wheezes, okay? And that could be from very severe asthma. Sometimes we get very severe asthma, we'll get uh, tightness on both sides, or sometimes inspiratory wheeze could be a foreign body aspiration. Maybe something's down there, or it could be something stuck, some secretions or something like that, okay? And try to get them to cough and clear, uh, but if not, uh, we'll try that as a wheeze, okay? Scattered wheezes, inspiratory, but most likely it's gonna be expiratory wheezes, okay? Crackles. Now, this, this is a pretty broad category, okay? Crackles will cover also, as you can see, a couple of subcategories, okay? We have fine and coarse, okay? And crackles usually means that there's something in the lungs that's air is moving through and so it's making this noise, okay? It could be fluid, okay? Or it could be secretions, okay? But we'll use crackles it's kind of this broad category, and then we'll break it down into subcategories. For instance, coarse crackles. Coarse crackles are when you listen and you can hear really, you can hear like rocks in the chest, stuff moving through, okay? And that could be a fluid overload. It could also be secretions. Secretions will sound like that, and we'll call that bronchi, okay? Now this is, bronchi is, uh, a slang term made for basically to uh, identify secretions, okay? Respiratory therapists, we all know ronchi secretions. Uh, a lot of MDs will, when you say ronchi, they think are secretions. So this has kind of become synonymous with uh, secretions, okay? But ronchi and rouse were both really slang. And these in the 90s, they tried to discontinue these breath sounds, but we don't really unlearn anything, okay? So it's best to learn these because people are still gonna use them, okay? So of course, crackles, and we're talking about fluid, stuff that's obvious in the top, usually, stuff that's moving around, stuff that could cough and clear, uh, coarse crackles, ronchi if we're talking about secretions mostly, uh, but those could all be in the same category as crackles, coarse uh, crackles. Now, fine crackles, this is a little bit different. This is uh, associated with fluid overload. And this is our CHF patients where they have fluid on the bases and you hear air moving through this fluid. Or we have a, uh, a patient who missed their dialysis and the fluid just retains in their lungs and they feel, they sound like they're underwater. And we'll call these uh, fine crackles, okay? Or rouse, which is the, which is another term for the, for, fine crackles. So fluid overload, synonymous uh, with rouse and fine crackles, uh, secretions, and fluid overload, but real obvious stuff moving around in the chest, we'll call coarse crackles, okay? Diminished, what's diminished? Diminished can mean a lot of things. It could mean our patient is 500 pounds and they have this thick chest wall that you could barely hear anything moving, or it could mean there's something going on in the lungs that's preventing air movement, okay? It could be fluid overload, okay? Fluid overload doesn't always have to sound like rouse and coarse crackles. It doesn't have to, if air isn't moving through, 
okay? Or we have diminished breath sounds, that's pretty serious, okay? We get some fluid overloaded patients, we get diminished bases, they're not moving any air, okay? It could also mean uh, pneumonia, get some consolidation down there. It could mean massive pleural effusions, okay? It could also mean lung collapse, okay? Diminished could mean many things, okay? So if you have a diminished breath sounds, particularly on one side more than the other, you're gonna have to investigate okay, and look into it, okay? Uh, some people though are just diminished. You don't hear a lot going on there, okay? I would call this probably the most used breath sound when we're talking about charting. Uh, because it's non-committal, we think, oh, this patient's 90, I don't hear much. Do you hear anything? No, diminished, right? What do you think is the, what's charted the least of all these breath sounds? Which one do you think? Other than this one, it's clear, okay? People are so afraid to chart clear, but there's a lot of patients out there that are clear and we don't want to look silly or stupid or like we didn't listen to them by putting clear. Yes, it's okay to put clear, okay? What's Strider? Now Strider has nothing to do with the lungs. It's the upper airway issue, okay? We have, uh, the airways are constricting, okay? We have a patient who has epiglottitis, uh, post-extubation, Strider. Uh, for kids, we've got a croup. Uh, we've got a kid who's croup and the airway is uh, getting tighter. Uh, and so when we oscillate for Strider, we're gonna put our stethoscope on the airway, okay? It's not here. Uh, Strider sounds like a high pitch whistle. It sounds like they can't breathe. It sounds like uh, something's occluding, and that's exactly what Strider is. And we'll treat that with a racemic epi. Uh, and if we're going to get an x ray, then we want to get a lateral, a side lateral x ray just to see if that airway is swelling up. Okay, so those are breath sounds. Uh, to keep it simple, clear, wheezes, crackles, diminished Strider. There's other ones that you'll see uh, pleural rub, you'll see tubular, you'll see bright, you'll see all those things. However, uh, let's stick to the basics because you know these are the ones you're really going to do you you're going to listen and you may have to do something about uh, i'll add another one absent okay every once in a while you get a patient who has a low back to me and they actually don't have a lung there or they get a big pneumo and you don't hear anything okay? so let's add absent also to the mix all right